And if you do not, simply look at the screens. From the New Revised Standard Translation, here's what it says. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Amen. Friends, if you would underline the beginning of the 10th verse, please. For we are, we are what he has made us. For we are what he has made us. Briefly this morning with your prayers and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we want to preach to you from the subject of, I can't even save myself. I can't even save myself. You will recall last Sunday that we dealt with the proverbial question of what must I do to be saved? We dealt with the idea that someone may ask you, how do I get saved? What are the requirements for salvation? What must I do to get in? And out of the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 21, we identify that Scripture teaches us that in the Christian faith, the two requirements for salvation are repentance and faith. Though there are many other things that you will do because you are a Christian, those are outcomes of salvation. The two requirements to get in, we dealt with last week, were repentance and faith. Well, if repentance and faith are what must I do to be saved, the question we have this week is then, how did my salvation occur? At the point that a person repents and have faith, how do you get in? How did you become a Christian? And I believe in the book of Ephesians, the Bible addresses this point specifically and importantly, the reason is because the Christian church historically has gotten confused about how salvation occurred. We got confused because we thought that we saved ourselves. By my own repentance and faith, I became a Christian. And because I became a Christian, I started acting differently. I started dressing differently. I started behaving differently. You remember old school things I used to say, I don't say no more. And places I used to go, I don't go anymore. And what we made salvation, we made it about our external behavior. I got saved because of my external behavior, because now I dress a certain way and because now I act a certain way and because now I talk a certain way. When you see me now, you see the difference in me and you know that I'm saved. The problem with that line of thinking is that if people can know that you're saved by how you behave on the outside, then people might think that other people aren't saved based upon how they behave. I can compare my behavior to your behavior, and since I believe that I behave better than you, I dress better than you, I look different than you, I'm saved and you're not. This created a sense of self-righteousness in the Christian church, and many churches and members of churches began to feel good about themselves and look down on other people. We forgot the truth of how we got saved. Yes, you did repent, and yes, you did have faith, but it was still the Lord that saved your soul. The story of salvation, brothers and sisters, you ought know, is not a story that is intended to promote your own ego and allow you to smell yourself for your good decisions and your good behavior. 
Uh, the story of salvation is intended always to remind you to tell others, I had to stop my own ego. I had to humble myself before the Lord and realize that I couldn't even save myself. It took the Lord our God to get me saved, and it's going to take the Lord our God to keep me saved. So when someone asks you after repentance and faith, how do I get saved? When you are in that question talking about salvation in Jesus Christ, the story ought not begin with your good decisions. You see, the problem is many of us, when we talk about salvation, we only talk about our lives after we get saved. The problem with talking about your life after you get saved is you are telling the antiseptic cleaned up version of your life. And if a person is not clean and all you talk about is how you are clean, they don't ever realize how I go from being not clean to clean. The story ought to begin with you reminding other people that there was a time when I was trapped. Everybody in here can tell a story of how they've been trapped before. And when, when I say trapped, I mean quite literally you were stuck. You were caught up in something that you could not get out of. Caught up in something that you had no human means of escape. Everybody in here has a testimony or a story of how back in the day in your past, you were caught up in something that you couldn't get out of. And the good news or the more important news is even now that you're saved, many of us can still testify we caught up in some stuff that we can't find our way out of. The story of salvation begins with you acknowledging there was a time in my life when I was caught up doing some things I didn't have no business doing, thinking some things I didn't have any business thinking, behaving in ways that were not kind with the Lord. Everybody in here can tell a story of how I was caught up with that girl longer than I should have been. I was dealing with that man I know I had no business dealing with. I was on that job pursuing that money, focused on that money, not thinking about the Lord. I was on that campus attaining those degrees, pumping my head with information, beginning to think that I was the captain of my fate and the master of my own soul. I was building my ego and my, my head bigger that I couldn't even fit into the sanctuary. I was caught up in something that I could not get out of. I needed help to get out. I need somebody else to get me out. I needed someone to acknowledge where I was and help lift me up out of the muck and the mire. You see, here on earth, we talk about being caught up in drugs, caught up in sex, caught up in relationships, caught up in alcohol. But in heaven, all that gets wrapped up in terms of being caught up in sin. I was caught up in sin, which by very definition means separation. I was caught up in an area and a time in my life when I was separated from God. Now listen, your separation, your sin might be different than my sin, and my sin might be different than your sin, but the one common factor between us all is all of us can acknowledge before the Lord that we've been caught up in S-I-N, sin. I was caught up in being separated from God. I was living my life doing whatever I thought I was big enough and bad enough to do. When I finally got to a point in my life where sin put me where I could not get myself back up. I ran with that fool long enough that they broke my heart. I ran with that drugs and alcohol long enough that I lost my family and I lost my job and I lost my money. I ran with my own ego and my mind long enough that I lost my friends. I ran in sin so long that one time I got knocked down and I couldn't get back up. There comes a time in every person's life when you get down and you get tired of being down. You get played, you get tired of being played. You are a fool, you get tired of being a fool. And you get to a point where you say, this is enough. I'm not living like this anymore. I'm not walking down this path anymore. I'm not going to that city of never-ending pain anymore. I want something different. And it is in that point in your life when you tell folks how you got saved that you tell the Lord, God, if you would have me, 
just like I am, the sinner that I am, the dirty person that I am, the person who makes mistakes, the person who is not perfect. But God, if you would have me just as I am, I'm going to make a decision this day that I no longer want to live my life separated from you. Now, God, I got to tell you, I'm not perfect. I'm still going to make mistakes. I'm going to fall in spots and places. But I declare from this day on for the rest of my life, God, I desire to be in relationship with you. You repented unto salvation, and then you told God, I believe in Jesus Christ as God and as the Son of God, and you coupled your repentance with faith, and in that moment, you were saved. Now that I'm saved, how exactly did it happen? How do I know that I'm going to heaven? And the Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 2, it's right there in the text, verse 8, that at that moment, when you repented in had faith that for by grace you have been saved through faith. Friends, you can't miss this in the text. This is the most important part of the entire verse. By grace through faith. I didn't get saved on my own. I didn't get saved by my good decisions. I didn't get saved by my last name. I didn't get saved because grandma got me to church. I got saved by grace through faith. Now notice closely the prepositions that are there in the text because the writer writes with specificity when he offers information on how you got saved. The preposition by grace, by means on, or, or the means of transmission. In other words, I was saved on grace. I was saved by the transmission of grace. And sometimes that gets confusing. But just think about how you got to church this morning. Did you realize that most of you got to church by car? You got in the car, and from getting in the car, you moved from where you were in your home to the church. Well, grace works just like that car. You got here by the car. You got to salvation by grace. Grace was the car that you were able to get into that moved you from being unsaved to being saved. But it didn't just happen by grace. It happened through faith. Everybody in here knows that the reason why you were able to operate that car that you were in is because in your wallet, in your purse, you have a driver's license. You got here by car through your license. Your license gives you the agency to operate the car. Without your license, you can't or shouldn't operate the car. Faith is the license that allows you the agency to operate the car called grace that moves you from being unsaved to being saved. I got here by grace because I had faith in my pocket. There's times in your life when you can remember, I couldn't find the grace of God. I didn't see the grace of God operating in my life. The reason why is because you got in the car called grace, but you didn't have the key to turn the ignition. But you finally realize when I started to believe in the Lord, when I started to have faith in Jesus Christ as God and as the Son of God, then I got in the car called grace. I had the right key at the right time, and I was able to move grace from where I was to where I am now. Thank God I got saved by grace through faith. If grace is the car, then faith is the license that gives you the agency and the opportunity to operate the car. And this is important, brothers and sisters, because the writer is letting you know glory to God that there is grace that is operative in my life. And here's the good news, and somebody can testify. I don't care where you've ever been in your life. Did you know when you were on drugs, grace was right outside the crack house waiting for you? Did you know when you were in somebody's bed, you ain't had no business being in, grace was on the other side of the door waiting for you? Did you know when you were at your job thinking you were smarter than everybody else, grace was at your desk waiting for you? In other words, I don't care how low you've gotten or how far away from the Lord you went in, in your life. Uh, isn't it good news that God loves you enough uh, that grace was always ready uh, and whenever you got the faith, uh, grace was ready to move you to wherever God would have you to be in your life. 
I got saved by grace. The reason why this is so important is I did not get saved because I started coming to church. I, I did not get saved because I started reading the Bible. I, I did not get saved because my grandmother's last name. I, I did not get saved because I have a title like preacher, a title like deacon. I, I got saved because one day I got in the car called Grace, and I turned the ignition with my faith, and the Lord our God saved my soul. You are saved by grace through faith. The writer, when you tell people about how they got saved, the writer thought that people might get confused about what happened and who did the salvation. So keep looking down in the text and watch what the writer says. The writer says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this, not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Let me say it again. I think you missed it. For by grace. You have been saved through faith. Here it is. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. You know, every now and then in the church, Christians get it twisted. And Christians begin to think that we are hoity-toity and better than other people because my behavior has changed, because my speech has changed, because my dress has changed, because I'm a reverend or a preacher or a musician or a deacon or a trustee. And because of who I am and what I do, this is why I got saved. Baby, I don't care how good you act on the outside. I don't care how holy your behavior is. I don't care how much Bible you read. I don't care how much praying you do. I don't care how much fasting you do, how much meditating you do. I don't care how many holy dances you dance. You can bank head bounce your way all the way into the church, but that is not going to get you up to heaven. Uh, the only thing that gets you up to heaven is grace through faith. Uh, there is nothing you can say to get your way in. There is nothing you can do to get your way in. Uh, there's not enough sermons I can preach, not enough prayers that can be prayed, not enough Bible study lessons that can be taught. Uh, because if it wasn't for the Lord our God, uh, who made a decision to give up his life, uh, that I might have life, uh, none of us would be saved right now. I I'm saved by grace. Through faith. I say, well, Reverend Williams, why is it so important that this is not of my undoing? When you are talking to other people and testifying about the Lord, don't you tell other folks you got yourself saved. Don't you act like it's because my grandmother brought me to church that I'm saved. It was Providence Missionary Baptist Church that saved me. A church ain't never saved nobody. It wasn't your preacher who saved you. It wasn't your good decisions. It wasn't your intuition. It wasn't your sagaciousness. Listen, I don't care if you're a Dorcas. It wasn't your Dorcasing that got you saved. If you're a matron, it wasn't your matroning that got you saved. If you're a preacher, it wasn't your preaching that got you saved. If you're a deacon, it wasn't your deaconing that got you saved. It wasn't your young adulting that got you saved. It wasn't your singing that got you saved. It wasn't your playing that got you saved. It wasn't your ushering that got you saved. You are saved because the Lord our God. God decided to save your soul by grace through faith. And it is not your own doing. Look at the book. It says, it is the gift of God. Now, some people may be confused about how this works, but let me break down to you how gifts work. If you had to earn it, it wasn't a gift. If you had to earn it, it was compensation for services rendered. A, a gift comes freely, unexpectedly. I didn't merit it. I didn't earn it. It wasn't warranted. Listen, most of you are going to get gifts for your birthday. Did you know you did nothing to get yourself here? Your mommy and daddy brought you into this world. Your birthday don't have a thing to do with you. The reason why you are getting a gift on your birthday is because of the grace of people in your life who are blessed to know you. And so they are giving you a free gift to tell you, thank you for being in my life. Well, watch this. You did nothing to get yourself saved. You did nothing to bring yourself to heaven. You did nothing to bring yourself to relationship with God. It was his love that lifted me. And because of his love, I received the free gift of salvation. Uh, this is why we sing love lifted me. Uh, you got to hear the words. Uh, you can testify to the Lord. I was sinking deep in sin. Uh, I was far from the peaceful shore, uh, but his love lifted me uh, and he gave me the free gift of salvation. 
the author is trying to let you know that when you get out in the highways and byways and you testify to other people, now that you look good, now that your hair is fixed, now that your clothes look right, I, I want you to tell people I once was naked and crazy and now I am clothed and sane. It wasn't my church that got me right. It wasn't Reverend Williams that got me right. It was nobody but the Lord. By grace, through faith. Now, if you keep reading quickly into the ninth verse, you'll notice that what he is saying in the ninth verse is, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. I'm in the eighth verse. It is the gift of God. Look at the ninth verse. He says, I underline these words, not the result of works. In other words, the writer is repeating the exact same point he just made in the 8th verse. In the 8th verse, he said, it is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. But just in case you get it twisted, preacher, and you think it was your sermon that got him saved, just in case you get it twisted, deacon, you think it was your prayer that got him saved, just in case you get it twisted, you think it was being in your family that got him saved, let me remind you uh, that this was not the result of works. Have you ever been in a relationship and somebody broke up with you and they say, it's not you, it's me? Here, this is what God is saying to you. Listen, baby, you got saved, but it's not you. It's me. The reason you are going to heaven has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. I know you are special and cute and fine. I know you come to church and you work hard and you study. I know you know the Bible and you're holy. I know you pray and you tithe and you give. But sweetie, you are going to heaven not by your works, but because of me, the Lord, your God. I'm the one who sat high and looked low. I'm the one who gave up my son on your behalf. I'm the one who carried that cross of Calgary's rugged hill. I'm the one who knew your name written in the book of life. And I I saved you because I created you and I love you and that's it. Not the result of works. Here's the good news. If you can't work your way into heaven, you can't work your way out of heaven. You see, if salvation was based upon works, if it was your works that could get you in, then your bad works could get you kicked out. Isn't it good news that it wasn't my good works that got me in? So my bad works won't get me kicked out. Reverend, how do you know? Because my Bible says that neither death nor life nor things to pass or things to come, neither angels nor things past nor present, there is nothing that can separate me from the love of God. Once I make the decision to get connected, God said, and lo, I will be with you always even until the end of age. So you got to keep reading in the text. This is where it gets good. He's letting you know that it is by faith alone that you get saved. It had nothing to do with how you worked or what you did or how you got it made it happen. It was your faith, brothers and sisters. By faith alone was the opportunity for grace there for you to get saved. And then he says what I think is the most important summation ever in all of Scripture. He says, for we are what he has made us. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Paul said it like this in Corinthians, because I am what I am. And I got what I got and I feel like I feel. You were created to be saved. The 10th verse makes it clear, for we are what he made us. You were created to be in relationship with God. And that means you were created to be saved. You take the salvation that God has given you. And you tell anyone that asks you what it means to be saved, you let them know that it's repentance and faith that's going to get you in. And at the point of their repentance and faith, what happens is that you get picked up in a car called grace. And the car operates by this thing called faith. And it moves you from this world to the world to come. It wasn't your own doing. It was the gift of God. And the reason why is because you were made to be in relationship with God. It's good news that I have a God. Because I can't even save myself. God bless you, Providence.
Amen. Providence, the word of God has gone forward. You've heard the message. I can't even save myself. Brothers and sisters, this is the time in our worship experience that we want to reflect on the word that we have just heard. In a minute, I'm going to review the sermon points and give you the big idea of the sermon. Then we're going to take some time to think and reflect on what the Lord is saying to us individually through this message. Then we want to think about how we can apply this message to our daily lives. If you would turn to the inside of your bulletin to the sermon notes section, you will notice the areas for the big idea, the sermon points, and the personal reflection. The big idea for today's sermon is God is not only why I got saved, but how I got saved. Point one, grace is the means and faith is the agent that makes salvation possible. Point two, I didn't work my way into heaven. It was God's work that made heaven available to me. And point three, I am saved because I was created to be saved. So if you would take the next few moments and quietly reflect on today's sermon, ask God to show you how you can apply this message to your life. Go now and ask the Lord, what is the Lord saying to you today? <laughs> 